Welcome to the video. Today we have a lot to cover. We're gonna break down all three helicopters. What can you install? What ammo should you be using? What's the proper ammo? And then we're gonna take the Arbiter up and I'm gonna show you some ASM, which is gonna be air to surface missiles, and then some AAMs, so air to air missiles. And then also I'm gonna show you how to hunt other players' vehicles in PVP using the air to ground missiles. And then I'm also gonna show you how other players are able to find you so easily when you're driving around in PVP. So firstly, let's go into the tech tree. So the tech tree is where you're gonna find them. You have to unlock them first, obviously, just like everything else in the game. So if you go down to the vehicles, there's three different helicopters. So first you have the Wild Goose, which is right here. And then moving past that, we have the Night Owl. And then lastly, all the way at the end near level 60 is gonna be the Arbiter Gunship. So now let's go take a look at these and let's actually get up nice and close with them and get a good understanding of these different helicopters. All right, so first is gonna be the Wild Goose. The Wild Goose sits at 5,960 durability points. Very Russian style looking helicopter. It's very much gonna be your basic transport helicopter, not designed for combat. Now we have the Night Owl at 6,920 durability, much more of a combat vessel. You do have a gunner, you have armament. We're gonna get more into that here in a bit. And then lastly, you have the Arbiter Gunship. That's the senior level, level 60, 8,140 durability. It's important to realize that in this game, there's no resistances. So like the Arbiter does not have 10 extra resistance. It just has more durability points. So if a missile does 200 damage to one helicopter, it's gonna do 200 damage to all helicopters. So the Wild Goose. The Wild Goose can only equip two different items. So first and foremost, if you come up here to this and just scroll over this, it'll actually highlight what you can actually use. And then if I scroll up some more, it'll show you what you can install. So this can install gun mounts and rocket pods. So this is the gun mount. The gun mount can only be installed in the Gray Goose. It won't go on the other ones because the other ones already have a gun, so they don't need a gun. All right, now let's move on from the Wild Goose and let's go over and take a look at the Night Owl. This is the Night Owl. We're not going to go too in detail on it because it's pretty much the exact same as the Arbiter as far as it goes for equipping items onto it. So now let's hop on over the Arbiter and I'm going to break it all down and everything for the Arbiter is going to apply as well for the Night Owl. All right, so let's break it down. The Arbiter is your tier 60. That's your level 60. It's your high one. That is going to be the gunship. So first, let's put on this AAM. The AAM is the air-to-air -air missile launcher. With that equipped, you could fire missiles in flight at another flying vehicle. You also have your rocket pods. The rocket pods are air to ground, dumb fire rockets. They do not lock onto anything. You fire them, they fly in a straight line with some drop and eventually they hit whatever they're gonna hit or they blow up in the sky. So going on to the ammo. In flight, you can switch your vehicle gear slot. And I'm gonna show you that later and show you some ticks and tricks and some common errors that happen. So what I do is I just put in all of my ammo that I'm gonna need, what I might even use. And then lastly, I always make sure I put in that chaff. Large tungsten AP ammo and then the large normal AP ammo do not go in the helicopter. It has no use for it. And that SAM launcher is a ground vehicle only. All right, so some basic things whenever you get in this helicopter. So at the bottom right now, it's loading. Whenever you first get in the helicopter, it will auto load. However, the second, third, and fourth times, however many times you get in the helicopter, it will not auto load. So the first thing you should always do is make sure your weapons are loaded and you're ready to go to combat. So the next little tip while we're right here is gonna be about switching your armament. So we're gonna break this down more later in flight, but you can come up here and you can just switch what your armaments are. So right here, I'm gonna swap them from left to right. With that, you're gonna see this weird black screen come around. If you look at the bottom, I don't have a weapon selected. So you just need to select a weapon and that will go away. So press one or two and bring up one of those selections. So there it is. Now we're back to normal. The next tip goes to everybody, but it should resonate more with PVP players. Be careful of your button presses. If you click the buttons while you're on the ground, you will fire flares, you'll fire missiles, you'll fire ammo on the ground. And then with this also, every time you hit the flare button, it's three flares. So if you only go out with 30 flares, you only have 10 uses of your flares. I talked about this in the previous video, but piloting style. So this is the third person piloting style. If you hit shift, you come into first person. It really depends on what you want and what you think looks better. All right, so I already demonstrated swapping components on the ground, but now let's do it in flight. So here, I'm gonna shift to third person. I'm gonna hit H for the auto hover. So now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna swap my air to air missiles for my air to ground missiles so we can get into some air to surface missile tactics. So if you look at the bottom, you'll see that it's not properly displayed. I'm missing one of them. This is pretty simple, it is pretty common. So just hop back in there and try to swap them. Flip places has always solved it for me. However, some people have said that you might need to take it off, put it back on, stuff like that. This has never taken me more than just a couple seconds to figure out and fix, so should not be too big. Next, remember to reload your weapon. I have altered, this one is not loaded. Reload it before you go and find someone. So how do you keep getting found so easily in PVP? This is how. Helicopters fly around with their air to surface missiles loaded up and watch how far away the targeting will actually start to take effect. 
So this is pretty much all the way down the valley. I start to get the lock. So now I know something's there. I could fire at this range if I wanted to because I have the red square. So now let's go into some shooting stuff. So now I'm gonna go into a gun run. This is gonna be me flying one missile away. There's a good splash. So rather than go for a second shot, instead I'm just gonna go up here because I do not wanna risk tanking my helicopter into the ground. That's like the worst thing you can do. So watch this. I'm gonna fire this missile straight ahead and it will go to its target. So you can just hover in a place and check out an entire valley and get some good shots off if you really wanted to. And this is in the hover mode, so hitting the H button is how this works. So there's all of my missiles. Tank's still not done yet. So let me show you something else now. So I'm gonna times four speed. We're gonna go all the way up over here. So now I have switched my rockets. They're not loaded. So right now you can see I'm loading my rockets. This is wasting time in combat and this could get you killed or you could lose a kill because of this. So once again, make sure you load your weapons. So let's fire some rockets at them. So you can see I have them selected. That's the target. You can see the burning tank. These rockets have drop. So that one was low. So I'm gonna aim a little bit higher. So here go three rockets. Let's see if they make contact. Nice, so that's a solid vehicle kill. So on the bottom right, you're gonna see where it says V and I can do times one right now. So I can switch that to times two if I want. Let's simulate this house with a bunch of enemies. So they just got bombed. So now on the bottom right, I'm gonna hit V. I'm gonna switch it to two and I'm gonna fire my last two rockets in unison. So you can set that all the way up to 10 and you can fire 10 rockets in one go against one target if you know that you're gonna have a good shot. So I talked earlier about switching seats. So I can switch seat in the gunner, but once again, you have to make sure it's loaded because the helicopter will immediately begin to fall down. And just because I know someone's gonna say it, even if I hop back into the pilot seat, put it in hover, it's still gonna do it. So now we're in hover, I'm gonna hop back in the gunner, immediately I start falling. If the gun was loaded, could I get a few shots off? Maybe, but certainly not a lot. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the air-to-air -air missile mechanics, the AAM mechanics. So the current durability of the Wild Goose Chopper that you can see that my buddy who just left the squad is in, so now he's my enemy, that durability is at 5,781, which is roughly about 97% durability. So you can see I immediately got the red targeting reticle right there, so you could fire even when on the ground. So even if you're parked and you hopped in and there's somebody in front of you, you could take a few shots. So as he comes up, there's the red box, it starts to appear. The red is locked, so white is locking, red is locked. So it doesn't have to be center. So I can hit them all the way from over here, about 30 degrees off my nose. Same on the other side as well. So now let's get our first missile out. So you're gonna see that I start to take off, nose up, and then I get one away. So on this, you can see that I fired when it was red, but it did not stay locked. It broke lock and then relocked. All it has to do is be locked when you initially fire. All right, so here's missile two being fired. So now that's two away, check the reload speed on the bottom. The air-to-air -air missile reload speed is much faster than the air-to-ground or the rocket pod reloading. All right, so now for the next two missiles, two more good hits, and now let's go down and let's check his ending durability. Another really good trick to landing is to hit H as you come into land to begin hover. I don't do that right here and I hit the ground really hard. So definitely gonna cut this out and not put this in the YouTube video for the world to see. So it's gonna show on your screen here in a bit, but it ended up being at 44% durability at the end of it. So we started at 97, so we took out 53% of its durability with four missiles. So now if we calculate that that medium AP ammo in the bow gunner could have been firing too, and if you have a good bow gunner and he's hitting shots, it should be incredibly easy to secure kills with the Arbiter against other aircraft. Of course, that wasn't really the point of the video. However, that's just some math to give you some numbers about how that worked out for us. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is the actual gunfire. So now my bow gun is loaded. I'm actually ready to use it. So I'm gonna switch seats and I'm gonna show you how it handles for solo players. Once again, be careful about clicking random buttons. You can accidentally waste two very expensive ammunition very easily. So I switch into the gunner. I'm gonna get some shots off. I'm already falling. I'm losing altitude rapidly. I got a scope in. It's not worth it. If you're a single player, stick to your cockpit. Because right now, if I get shot, if anything happens, I have to switch to my seat before I can begin to do anything. So it puts you in a very dangerous position. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. This video was specifically requested by Fitty64 on my Discord, which you can find in my YouTube channel homepage. I hope that you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the content, hit that subscribe button and follow along and stay updated with our future videos. And let me know in the comments what you want to see next from Off Duty Gaming.